Hello, I'm Colin Bradley. I'm going to show you how to produce this fabulous pastel pencil rustic well picture using just 10 pastel pencils. Now let me show you what you'll need individually. The pastel pencils that I'm using are made by Faber-Castell. They're called Pip Pastel Pencils, but you can use any pastel pencil. They all work in the same way. Now, the colours that I've chosen, the 10 colours I've chosen, is 101, 103, 230, 233, 190, 225, 104, 168, 174, 182, 176, and 175. As I say, that are the numbers for the um, Paper Castell pastel pencils. Now, if you've got another make of pastel ones, they won't relate to those numbers. So you just have to check and make sure you've got colours that are similar. You don't have to exactly the same colours, but the, it's best to keep them as I'm doing because I'm going to be mixing the colours together quite often. So you, you need compatible colours. That's the pencils. Now, in addition to that, the tools that we use now, you can use a razor, razor blade or you can use a safety razor blade. These are what I tend to sharpen my pencils with because I prefer them. Normal pencil sharpeners, they can tend to crack the lead, so I wouldn't go down that road. So either any scalpels will work as well, as well as craft knives. So you can use any manner of things to sharpen them, but as I say, pencil sharps are not too good. The other thing you'll see me using is this. This is a colour shaper. Now again, you don't have to have for this, but it's very useful. And it's a number two colour shaper. And all the things I'm going to show you now are available on our website except for that and that's just a common garden soft eraser well everybody's got those in their house so you don't necessarily need me to tell you but it's a good idea to have something like that handy but what we do sell on the website together with everything else is the uh, perfection double-ended pencil eraser now this is very useful and you will see me using it this is the uh, soft end and this is the hard end generally this is the one we use, but if we've got a stubborn uh, colour that we want to get rid of, then we use the hard end. So that's what we use. OK, and now that's the, that's the pencils and the tools. Now what about the paper? Now the paper that I prefer to use is uh, 160 gram on grey pastel paper. It's got a tooth in it that runs across. This is my preferred uh, paper, but you could use any pastel paper, but keep the colour similar to this in other words not too light and certainly not too dark now if you have any problem getting hold of that we do sell it on our website and it's uh, our own pad and uh, we, you can buy that from us now the other thing you'll need of course is the reference picture well that can be downloaded from our website and so can the line drawing so you don't have to draw it out so how do we do that? Well, what, what you do, let me show you. You tape your, your paper to a board. Now I'm using um, half, but you could honestly use any other board that uh, suits you. Tape it all the way around, like I'm use, you see me doing here. Because that way, you don't get any slip. Let's take that little bit off the top. There we are. Now that's nice and secure, and and uh, it's a perfect uh, surface, and it's very manoeuvrable too. This is why I choose the hardboard. Now the next operation is to transfer our line drawing onto our pastel paper. So how do you do that? Well, we prefer to use this, which is trace down. And this can be purchased from our art store. This is what it looks like. It's got a graphite one side and nothing the next. So what you do is you put it between the two. It's a good idea to take this onto the pastel paper, simply because it won't move around. You don't want to shift halfway through the transfer. And so that's on there. Graphite side down, and then you transfer. I've already done a little bit of this, but I'll carry on, do a little bit more. Just transfer it through. 
like that. Just go over the lines. You need to put, put a fair bit of pressure on here to make sure it transfers through okay. There you go. I'll just do, do this and then I'll show you what it looks like. There you go, just down there. Right. There you go, like that. So, what I would suggest once you do that is to go over the lines again when you take the carbon out and just make sure you've got a good image come through. There you go, down there like that. And like that. There you go. And when you finish, it'll look like that, only it'll be on there. Now this is graphite, remember, so if there was a, if you made a mistake or, or a fupa, you could rub it out. Look. Useful. Okay. Right, having done that, we take that off of there. And basically, with our reference picture close to hand, so we can see what we're doing, pencils as well, uh, we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to apply the ivory pencil to all of the woodwork. This is to form a base for the stronger colours. Now, I'll just do this section for the moment. And then into that, I'm going to immediately put some grey. Now, we're going to put quite a lot of colour and what happens now? The grey will give us a nice tone. Now, one of the things that I will do immediately is make it just a little stronger in the shadow areas. Now, I'm not pressing very hard, all right? This is quite soft. And this is also over here. So everything I do will have a slightly stronger tone on the area where the shadow is. And the, sh the light source is from this way. Okay, so everything is going to, everything that hits the light source is going to be lighter. Now well, you'll see that in a minute. Now just under there, and there. Now this starts the ball rolling really, and you can see when you do this, you can see, oh, I can see how this is going to pan out. See, now that's in there. Okay, so that, that's all the grain, and here we want it just a really quite a light application and that. be very tentative to start with you can always put more on the great thing about the pastel pencil is that if you make a mistake you can erase it and you can take your time now there's that's the first um, application now the second color I'm going to use is this one this is 182 now the two double three and which is the gray mid gray and the 182 are really great together. They work wonderfully well. So let's just put a little bit of that on. Again, see how gentle you have to be. Well, you don't have to be, but it's wise to be, otherwise you're going to start compressing the paper. And then you lose the advantage. Now in here, we've got to make that just a little darker, remember. It's, it really is just, just a little bit more pressure. And we'll be putting some dark colors on in a minute anyway. Okay, so that's that's got that. Now you can see now a distinct difference. And here, of course, will be in shadow. Now the only problem you've got here is you're going to lose the lines. You see, if I do a little more, you'll see I've lost those lines. So what I would do in a situation like that, we've got a colour like a, it's a, a, a 176. I've got the wrong, pick, 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 wrong pencil up. 176. And 176 is a brown. So straight away, as soon as you start losing the lines, just put the brown in, draw it. So it's a graphite pencil, really, just just to put in the lines again. You could even do it up there if you want, because this is the next colour we're going to be using. I've only I've restricted this to twelve pencils. Now, ordinarily, when I do my pastel work. I can use up to 30 pencils, but to make it easier for you, and this is a 
really just an exercise anyway. There we are, let me see that. That works really well. Uh, let's just now continue with that and make that a little darker on this side. And all of this wood will be treated in the same way. Great. Now I'm going to use a kind of shaper. Now if you haven't got one of these, don't worry. Um, but they are really useful. And what they do, they just push the colour into the paper. You see that? Now, you'll also notice that there's a very wood-grained effect there. It's partly the way I've applied the pencil and partly the pastel paper, which is a really, really great product. There we are now. I haven't put any on here, so let's just put some in here now. And then we'll put just a little something a little darker on. A little in there needs to be just a little stronger. Like that. Now I would definitely now go in with your brown and just strengthen those areas a little more. Like that. Yes, it's already beginning to look rustic. Slightly heavier shadow there because there's a under there because you've got a little bit of a, an overhang, so it's going to make it a little stronger. this pencil just to lay the extra colour on there. Lovely. Use your colour shaper again just to make that just a little softer. There we are now. Now we've got to put some colour in it because although we've got um, a nice effect there. We now need some colour and tone. So I'm using the 176, which is a dark brown, but this time to create just a little bit of texture. You see? Like that. And we also need it in here. Now this is a little darker in here. Let me just show you how you can make this work. I've left that deliberately light for the moment because if you make everything too dark, you're going to lose the effect. Now we're going to make that just a little darker, right? But in one spot there, you can press but just a little harder to make it work a little more. A little better, okay. Uh, now we need to put colour on here now. A little more grey. Pastel pencil won't dry out, which is a great. See how nice that looks. But we're not finished yet. I've got a, another green. This is 168 in the Faber range. And this is great because you can add, now add a bit of weathering to the picture. And this can go in here too. Now I don't think you need to do any more than that. You may want to add more on, but I think that looks great. A good idea now would be to sharpen the pencil up to a sharp point, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to cut it into those areas to make them just a little bit more, a little stronger. Got it? Now I brought you a little closer because you 
would appreciate this better. I've got a nice sharp pencil. This is the dark brown. And put a little extra strength in. which I am, I also put just a little strength under here because there'll be a shadow caused by this. Just a little. There you go. Now, now, now you've got that in there. What you can do is you can add more colour to it. Like, for instance, if you want a little bit of wood grain in there, you can use the pastel pencil just to bring a little more strength into it. See how that attractive that could be? Also do the same here. Be amazed when you finish this off how meaningful this is. The other thing you can do is we've got a darker green which we can be using. And this is um, 174 in the favour range. Now this one will give you just a little bit extra to, to get with the light green. Now look how nice that is. Now what I'm going to be doing is all of this, rest of this well, in the same way. All the woodwork will be the same. But there's no need for you to see me do all of that. But what I will do is I will go through in little sections and you'll see little bits and pieces. But I shall be using just the pencils I've just showed you. I won't add any more to it. So let me put those out so you can see what they are. And that was the ivory pencil. And the grey Try to remember the order I give them to you. I think I think it was that order, and the brown, of course. Now the brown came in there. So what we've got is the ivory, the mid grey, the ochre, the dark brown, the mid green, and the dark green, and that produced that. So I shall do that with those pencils, and you'll you'll know. It'd be obvious when you look at the end of it which one I'm using. I won't bother to show them to you. But I'll get on and do the rest of this, all this, this woodwork. <laughs> 